All right, so I want to talk about part two of uh, homework four, um, and specifically orthogonal trajectories. Um, and I want to work this out. This is actually a very important concept um, within systems. Um, for example, if you have the flow of a fluid around some surface, the vectors, the velocity vectors, if it's non-turbulent flow, this, these particles or this fluid will suffer drag um, and these particles will drag against these particles and so on, but that drag should dissipate as you get further away in height. And so there's a function in height that describes these these contours where the velocity is a constant where it's a level curve and so you can talk about this height away or this orthogonal function that will tell you what the velocity should be away from the object and so the curve of the object defines the first curve here how that curve deforms, the orthogonality at every point. We'll, discuss, we'll talk about how this profile um, manifests itself in further velocity vectors. <coughs> and so the flow rate has what would be like level curves. Um, in electrodynamics, you can have a charged particle like an electron, and it exhibits an electric field that radiates out or in sink or a source around it e equally in all directions and that E field follows Coulomb's law I need to make my vectors here and so this is the E field and the E is K, Q over R squared, where Q is the charge of the particle, and K is a constant um, that relates the charge. It's Coulomb's constant. Uh, there's other ways to look at this. And so the strength of the E field can be given at any point away from the particle. Well, because this is a radial function, the strength of the E field here is the same at every point. And we can also define minus my kind of lopsided there, right? These are circles. I can talk about moving here. And we can look about moving in our E field as moving orthogonal to these areas of equal potential energy. Because the position within a field determines an amount of potential energy. If I want to move from this point to this point, I have to do work in the radial direction and a change of work can be stored as potential energy and so these would be equipotential curves and so the relationship between the E field and the equipotential curves are orthogonal and orthogonality is at its essence a right angle it's the mathematical concept of a right angle and in vector calc you'll use the identity that A times B equals zero when they're orthogonal and a times b equals one when they're parallel um, and this is the dot product on how that vector is multiplied and so sometimes you'll hear people talk about orthogonality as being this condition that when a dot b equals zero um, that it is orthogonal and when a dot b equals one um, they're parallel um, I'd like to think of it as a right angle um, and it works between how we think of different parameters being axes or values. We'll look at orthogonal functions. There are sets of functions that are orthogonal. What we want to do right now though is look at how we can talk about moving from this representation, the equipotential fields, to the E field. And the technique we're going to use is called orthogonal trajectories. And it's a useful technique for any um, basically field 
um, or any area where we have a level contour and there's some generating function from that level contour and if we know the definition of the contour we can find that generating function and vice versa. And so we want to kind of talk about what it means to be at a right angle to something. And so we dig back into our old algebra and we say, well, if I have a line here and it has slope m1 and I put a line into it at a right angle, m2 has the opposite sign because it's now descending when m1, oops, that's m2, when m1 was ascending, and its rise over run flips. And so we say it's the negative reciprocal. And, and so that rule becomes the basis for, for what we need to build. So what we're going to do is we're going to say we're going to start and we're, we're going to say that our contours are going to be some f of x, y. And they're equal to a constant. And we, we dished out of all of that or, or what we found out of that was that if I take the partial with respect to x dx plus the partial with respect to y dy that's equal to zero and we were able to say well this tells me something about, about this function which was if I subtract dx from both sides here. And divide by dx. And I want to divide this side by dy. Or df dy, sorry. I have that the slope is equal to this relationship between the partials. And that, that's kind of a good starting point, and that's what the question one is asking us to do. But I want to switch colors because I, I want to define my, I want to find the ortho, orthogonal trajectories to this. So to do that, I need to get orthogonal to this. So my orthogonal trajectories, I'm, I'm going to keep my variable names, but I've changed colors because we're now talking about something else. And so I need the perpendicular slope to this, so I'm going to change my sign, so the negative is going to become positive, and I'll take the reciprocal. That's not too bad. And so now we're in we're in the world where we're going to create our orthogonal trajectories. So I started with my 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 function of level curves here, and I move into my orthogonal trajectory. So we're in orthogonal trajectory land right now. Um, I'm okay with that. And so I'm going to recross multiply. So df partial of x dy, and on this side df y, partial of y, sorry, dx. And I'm going to bring them together, so I'm going to subtract dy from both sides, df partial of y dx minus df partial of x dy equals zero. And so I have this new form that represents my um, orthogonal trajectories. And it's, it's in a form it's actually very quite similar to an exact equation. What happens is I get a sign change and a swapping of the partials. Well, that's okay because what did we do? We took the negative reciprocal, right? And so we can see if we stop and kind of think about it, we have taken a, a, a perpendicular slope by doing this. All right, let's use this. Let's look at a family of curves so, and I'm going to use the first example here we're going to look at circles and there's all circles all right, we can define all circles this way where x squared plus y squared um, about the origin and this gives me their radius well square root of the radius right k squared 
K would be the, if K was squared, it'd be the radius. But oh, we're okay with it like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to find our orthogonal trajectories. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the partial of f with respect to x. And I'm going to find that's 2x. And I'm going to take the partial of f with respect to y, and that's 2y. And so what I can do now is I can take these and I can plug this into our new form of our equation here, watching our signs. And so I have 2y dx minus 2x dy equals 0. That's not too bad. In fact, I'm going to make this a new thing. So I'm going to change colors again. And this is a new thing. This is some differential equation of a function I want to find. The end goal is my orthogonal trajectory, but I now have a form of differential equation that I want to find. And I'm going to go, you know what? That's m, and that's n. And so I'll say m of xy is equal to 2y, and the partial of m with respect to y is 2. So, right, so now I'm doing my test for exactness. Right? Treating this, I, I don't care about the family it came from anymore. This is its own differential equation, and I'm doing a test for exactness. And yes, I know I came from an exact equation realm, but I'm now in a different space because I'm orthogonal to that space I was looking at before. And this is negative 2x. And so the partial of n with respect to x is negative 2. Well, this is not exact. So I want to find an integrating factor. And so I want to start by going as mu of x. Is this a function of x? So I look at the partial of m with respect to y, minus partial of n with respect to x over n. And if this is a function of x, then I'm good. If not, I'll have to do the partial of n with respect to x minus the partial of m with respect to y over m. And if that's a function of y only, I, I, I can use y as, as what I need for my integrating factor. And so I, I come through here, and what do I have? I have 2 minus minus 2 over negative 2x. And so that equals 4 over negative 2x or negative 2 over x. And this is a function of only x, so now I'm going to do my integrating factor. Now remember, that's my original function, so let's move into integrating factor mode. Uh oh I got big. And where'd my mouse go? That's, there we go, 50%, there's 100%. If it gets big, it uncenters my window. I've got to get used to all these shortcut keys. All right. And so I want to find my integrating factor. And so that's e to the function of negative 2 over x dx, which is e to the negative 2 ln x or this is 1 over x squared. And so I now have my integrating factor. I'm going to multiply that by the red equation. So I get 2y, and I'm going to do this as x minus 2, minus 2x minus 1, whoops, get my dx in here, and my dy in here, equal to 0. And I now have an exact equation. So I'm going to solve this exact equation, and the function I get out of it will be my orthogonal trajectory. So I'm switching the signs and the partials. I've switched my space, and I now treat that as my new differential equation, and now I solve it. So we'll go f of x comma y is equal to the integral 2y x to the negative 2 dx. And that's going to be equal to, let's see here, I'm going to pick up a negative sign. So negative, uh, let's see, do, do, do. I'm going to pick up 
a negative sign. Let's see. Negative. I want to make sure I'm not missing a negative sign here. 2y x to the negative 2 dx. And so I want to go up 1 in x. So negative 1. I need to divide by a negative, so that is negative. Okay. And then in, I want to... Oh, did I miss... Did I miss a sign change? No, I'm good. And so x negative 1... Where's my notes? There we go. 2y plus g of y. Yeah, that works. That works nicely, actually. And so negative 2yx minus 1 plus gy. And so I come over here, and I take the partial of this with respect to y, which means I take the partial of this with respect to y, so I get negative... 2x to the negative 1 plus g prime. And I'm going to realize this is n, and this is my function n here. So negative 2x to the negative 1 equals negative 2x to the negative 1 plus g prime. And so g prime is equal to 0. Well, if I integrate that, that says that my g is a constant. And so I'll come back here and I'll stitch my g together. I'll get negative 2y over x plus a constant equals 0. I'll bring this over to the oh, plus a constant equals some other constant. Because my function is equal to some constant. All right, so what can I do here? Well, I'm going to play with my constants. So I'll bring the k's together so I get negative 2y over x equals some you know, k and a k, I'll call it um, little c. And then I'm going to divide by negative 2 so I get y over x equals, well c divided by negative 2 is big c. Right? I've worked my way through my constants. And that is equal to y equals c of x. That's what we were looking to see. We're looking to see y is a line through the origin, and it's all lines through the origin. And if we go and look at what we were trying to find the orthogonal trajectory for, hey, that describes the lines that are orthogonal to circles. I probably made signs errors galore in there. I don't know. We'll see. Happy hunting.